In this video, I'm going to share three ways on how to paint rocks. And for your convenience, I've packed it all up into a PDF you can download for free from the description below. And I would love it if you could like and subscribe to my channel so that other people get to see this content as well. Thanks for your support and let's get painting. The first thing I would say is when you sketch or draw your rocks is to have quite straight angles. Now the two rocks that I'm drawing from are actually quite round but I emphasize the straight lines and the angles. And I'm also making sure that I know where the planes are, the different sides of a rock. You know, sometimes they can be three or four or more, but this helps me plan where the light will hit the rock and which parts of the rock will be in shade. If you draw them too round, you know, they can easily look like uh, potatoes. It's helpful to trick our brain into thinking that what we're looking at is hard and, and has edges, which is kind of what rocks are. So that's why I exaggerate the straightness of rocks and rock formations. I mixed a little bit of raw sienna and a bit of burnt sienna, just a earthy colour. You can really use any colour for rocks and you'll find obviously rocks in nature that are grey and blue and red and have more yellow tint to it. So really go with what works for your painting. This is just an example. So I've painted it quite wet and I've changed the colours a little bit. So not just one flat colour. As you know, I always like to vary my colours. And the next thing I would suggest is that you don't paint individual rocks. So if you have two or more rocks and they you know, lying next to each other or overlap, just go straight from one rock to the next without leaving an edge or a border between them or paint them individually. We'll separate the rocks in the next step with the darks. And having those colours run into each other will just make for a more cohesive painting and also creates an effect of reflected light. And here's my next tip, paint the darks, the shadow sides right away, wet and wet, including the cast shadows. I just changed the colour from umber to ultramarine blue and that way we get this lovely blending happening and we can strengthen the shadows once that's dry. And before this dries I will add some texture to it because rocks have always uh, amazing textures and there's a few things you can do and you can use all three of them or just one of them. The first one is to scrape. Scraping is great if you use something like a credit card or a palette knife because it further emphasizes the um, straight angles of a rock, you know, and this one uh, allows me to also create a bit more highlights if, you know, things got too dark or... I wanted to have more sun hit on a particular side. And because the paint is still wet, if I scrape out too much or the wrong shape, I can just easily correct it. You can sprinkle in salt. I'm sure you've heard that one before. That will absorb some of the pigment. Or you go the other way and you add more droplets of water which will create like mini backgrounds, mini blooms, which also create texture. Now that the rocks are completely dry, I will strengthen some of my shadows and darker parts of the rock. You don't have to do that if you're happy with how it turned out in the first wash, but usually it dries a little bit too light because we did it all wet and wet. So I wanted to have a bit more oomph. And if the rock asks for it, bit of dry brushing just to add a little bit of texture and here I'm just adding a bit of a background to it just so that there's a bit of context around the rocks Now I take the same approach when I paint a cluster of rocks, say a rock shelf or, you know, a cliff face or something like that. And I pay attention to the overall shape of the rock formation, so the outline that it 
creates and I draw that first before I draw in any individual rocks inside of that shape. And then as before, I paint the entire area in one go and not the individual rocks. And again, I just change my colors around. I did some cross hatching on my sketch so I know where the shadows are gonna go and which sides of the rocks are gonna be in sunlight. And now I'm dropping in some darker and cooler colors into those shadow areas so that I get the blending effect while that first color is still wet. And while that's drying, I'm gonna do the background rock, very similar, just a few different colors there. And then when that's completely dry, you can see it's created these lovely um, wet and wet textures. I now strengthen my shadows and darker areas. And once more I connect the darker areas. I don't want individual rocks. They're all part of the one formation. So I just continue with my shadow colors from one side to the next. So that takes a little bit of planning. Uh, that's why we sketch and do studies. And you don't always have to completely copy what's in front of you. It's more important to have nice shapes and good light and dark shapes that work well together rather than you know depicting nature accurately. And I'm connecting that up to those rocks there at the top. Some of the cracks in there and you can see that it's now slowly coming together and it reads as a rock formation. Same with the rock above. Get a bit more detailed as the rock is a bit further in the distance. I've painted a bit of an ocean around the rocks there very simply to get a bit of context and before this shadow layer dries completely I scratch in some texture with my palette knife again. This scraping technique works really well for rocks. I do it a lot with a credit card or a palette knife like I do here and it helps with creating those straight rock faces. In the third example, I'm going to show how I paint lots and lots of rocks that are in the distance without having to paint all of the rocks. So I've done the first layer as, as previously, maybe not so many different colors in there, just a bit of raw sienna there on, on the foreground rocks. And now I'm painting in the shadow layer. And again, connecting the shape. But the idea here is that I just paint the foreground rocks in a little bit more detail. And then for the background, I hardly do any painting with the rocks because we are telling the brain with those foreground rocks, this is what we're looking at. And then for the many, many rocks in the background, I literally just dabble in some dots here and there. And that's enough to give the impression of that the rocks just continue into the distance. This is the difference between photographs and painting. We're trying to create an impression, we're trying to do an interpretation. Probably can save ourselves a lot of time by not having to paint a lot of details. We've already established these are rocks, the foreground and then the background. We don't need to provide that much detail. So three examples on how to paint rocks. We started at the top with individual rocks and how we paint them in more detail with overlapping shapes and blending and then scraping, adding texture and shadows into it. For clusters and rock formations, we paint the whole shape as one, again, transitioning through different colors and then adding in the shadows as a connected shape and then using tools to scratch in more texture, just like it's a single rock. And in the third example, I just painted the foreground rocks and then just very little detail for the back.